So, anyway. I'm ready, Sheila. Hell yeah, I am. So, so, welcome for the first time to our Quebec radio show, my friend. I'm going to have to introduce yourself. Well, my name's Ruben. I'm from a band in Australia called High Time. Uh, we've never left the country yet, but uh, I don't know. If you guys ask us politely, you might come up to Canada. Thank we, you very much for having me, by the way, Eric. First of all, I must say, I told Ag the mainframe, I told to no quarter that I'm working my ass to bring a plane full of you Australian band. Oh, that would be awesome. I, I don't know that it's such a practical idea. Putting a bunch of us on the same plane is, uh, <laughs> I don't think that plane will get to where you want it to go. But <laughs> It's funny they all said that. How did it start? Um... Yeah, so I mean, there's, there's a there's a whole story behind it. I'll, I'll try to I'll try to spin it real quick. But um, so there's there's the three of us in the rhythm section, like the the, the guys, is me, Jay the bassist, and Dave the drummer, and Dave's sister Nina is the singer. And um, we so I knew Jay and Dave through the Adelaide punk scene. So I started I started playing in the scene when I was like 16 or whatever, and they started probably playing around when they were 16, they were a couple of years older than me, so I grew up listening to their bands and always thought that they were like these like punk gods of, of Adelaide, you know, it was really, really cool, and uh, and so, yeah, like I, I started a band and we started playing some shows with them and we got to know each other pretty well and one day I met Nina, so I met Dave Fisher and, um, and we actually started an acoustic band together because uh, she wrote really lovely acoustic music and still does, and... Um, and one day uh, I was jamming with my punk band and, and we were thinking of what cover songs we'd like to play. And one of the guys was like, why don't we get Nina in and we can do Laurie Myers by No Effect, you know, so we can have a chick singer in, in the band. Because at that time there wasn't much female-fronted punk in, in Adelaide. And uh, we were like, yeah, sure, you know, I asked Nina, I said, oh, you know, my, my band wants to do a cover of this song, you want to come and have a sing? She's like, yeah, sure, I'm going to try. And, she comes in, she's all nervous, I'm not sure, you know, can I sing punk, I don't know. And uh, and it gets to the to the scream in the song, and she just, Wah! you know, it's like the most like, blood-curdling scream, and I was just like, whoa, what the hell? And, and so we, we played a couple of shows with her, uh, like just coming up to this one song, and um, and when Jay, like our bassist saw it, he came up to me, he's like, dude, you and me, we're starting a game with her, it's happening. Let's just fucking do this, and we couldn't find a drummer, so her brother Dave was like, "Yeah, fuck it, I'll drum." And sorry, I, I shouldn't swear on radio. Um, and yeah, so he he joined on drums, and and that was that. That was high time, and and um, yeah, we started with the intention of just being a punk band, but at, at the time that we started, I was uh, studying um, all sorts of world music and jazz and stuff like that, and it just slowly started sneaking its way into the music. Um, because that was just what I was listening to so much at the time. And uh, and that just kind of opened up the whole, well, you know, now that we're doing a bit of reggae and a bit of Spanish-sounding stuff and a bit of surf, it's like we can do anything we want. So we all brought our influences to the table and then we have high time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Try, try to take you on a bit of a journey. Actually, actually, one of the best things about having, like, mixed genres in the deal is, um, when you, you know, if the crowd's going really not, you know, if you've got to show that everyone's jumping on heads and, you know, doing a big circle pit and all this kind of stuff is, you can only do that for so long before everyone starts to look a bit weary, so you just play a couple of reggae tunes and <laughs> let them catch their breath and dance and then, and then you hit them again. And <laughs> so you can just keep doing, you know, we, we can play for over an hour and at the end of the show people feel much and hard because we've given them kind of, uh, you know, it's like they're doing it in rounds, it's really funny. <laughs> And you know it's it's so spontaneous. You know you don't you cannot buy that or you know it just it, you throw that to people and it's the reaction. Yeah, yeah. And, and we, also uh, sometimes it like gets people into us that normally wouldn't be. Like we've we've got a few people, not very many, but we've got a few people that come to our shows and they're like, oh, we don't really like all that punk stuff that you play, but we just come to see your reggae stuff. <laughs> oh, okay. It's funny. <laughs> At least they're there, yeah, you know. Yeah. But you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's cool to see that that you can collide those two worlds together. Yeah, yeah, and that's something that we we used to do a lot in Adelaide. Um, we don't so much anymore because there isn't the band that there used to be. But 
we used to put on these shows that had like, you know, a hip hop band and a reggae band and, um, you know, a ska band and an acoustic act and, and, and us. And it was like, we just tried to get all the genres and just go, hey, look, you know, punk can sit just as well with everything else if it wants to. It's cool. It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful it also, connection it in every style. Not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And and I was just seeing there because you know we we felt that that Australia it's big it's fucking big but I I was just seeing in your in... yeah like in Adelaide uh, we have a really um, a real tight knit family scene in in the punk scene um, it's not as big as it was when we started but um, but yeah we've got a funny scene in Adelaide where you might go to like a an you know, a hardcore show that's in an alleyway somewhere, you know, something really underground and and you see people there and then and the next day you go see some acoustic or hip hop artist and those same people are there. Um and it's yeah, we we've got a really funny scene in Adelaide. But um that's for like all of Australia. Uh there, there's there's like there's a good punk scene for sure. Like it's it's all there. It's just uh it's just getting to them I think is a bit tricky but yeah, we we really need a band that kind of, um, or, or a few bands that start to connect all the things together, that start to, you know, get the bands from Brisbane and Adelaide to play to the big Adelaide scene and the bands from Adelaide to play to the big Brisbane scene. And there's, there's a couple of uh, couple of dots that need to be connected there because cause there's people out there and, and they do tons of shows. It's just... Um, I don't know. I think I think it's hard for touring Australian bands, like the ones that tour around Australia. They they usually have a big following in their hometown, like say you know maybe at their hometown they play to two hundred, three hundred people, and then they go into state and play to like seven, sixty. You know, <laughs> it's a very common kind of thing here. So yeah, something something's got to change there. I think we've got to put our heads together and yeah, bring our things together. And I think we have the same problem, uh, as, you know, in Canada yeah. and, and Australia. It's just, it's too long travel. So, like, geography, it's kind of impossible for a band to tour nonstop. It's just, you lose too much yeah. money from town to town. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's our biggest kind of issue as well. Like, I mean, we, we, we're going on tour next weekend. Um, and it's a bit different for us now because our drummer's got uh, two babies, so we can't stay on the road, we have to do just weekends. So what it means is, I mean, next Friday we fly up to Brisbane, play our show there. In the morning we fly to Melbourne. So, so we're flying from Adelaide to Brisbane. Adelaide to Brisbane is like two and a half thousand kilometers or something. And then, uh, or maybe 2,000 kilometers. And then we play the show, we get up in the morning and fly to Melbourne, which is, you know, a 1,500 kilometer flight, and then play the show there. And in the morning, we've got to fly back to Adelaide, which is, you know, another 900 kilometers. And then the next weekend, we fly to Sydney, it's 2,000 kilometers. You know, it's just, it's huge. Like, and this is all to play five shows. We've been covering something like, you know, 12,000 kilometers distance. So... The yeah, problem is bigger than tough. us, you know, because, you know, there's no band traveling with plane on everything. <laughs> they just, oh, they, yeah. cause, you know, they're Adizzy from Sweden that came and they did like the Sagne to Rwanda, which is like nine hour drive straight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we, we know that one all too well. <laughs> it's just completely Actually, insane. We, uh, <laughs> we, we, uh, the, the worst we ever did actually was, uh, we played in, um, oh, I can't remember what town that was. I think it might have been Geelong, which is, I think, yeah, seven or eight hour drive from Adelaide. But what we did was we uh, we played the show um, super late at night. You know, stuck around, had had a couple of like you know a beer or you know something like that. And then we get in the van and and drive home and get home in time to drop everyone at work. And <laughs> like we literally, you know, we'd already been on tour, we played this show in Geelong. Get up, uh, like get off stage, hang out for like an hour, get in the van, and drive seven hours back to Adelaide and drop everyone at work. Like we didn't sleep or anything. <laughs> it was awful. Oh yeah. god, <laughs> it's like, hey, <laughs> punch in, and then like, oh god, it's gonna be a goddamn long day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's really bad. But lucky for me, I had a pretty cool boss then, and I was just like, hey, I was on tour and I didn't sleep, and he's like, yeah. Sir. 
Yeah, no, it really is. It really is. Yeah, we we got a lot of um a lot of bands in Adelaide at the moment that are uh because I feel one of the big problems in the punk scene I feel is a is a a, a small um issue with kind of mentorship. You know, we need more bands showing the the up and coming bands how to do it and what to do. You know, so some bands go to themselves, all right, well we want to play a show in Melbourne, and and then. Uh, what do we do? You know, how do we, how do we play a show in Melbourne? They they don't know how to start, where to look. You know, um, yeah, I think mentorship's a big thing that will will help all around the world. You know, in the local DIY scenes. You know, if you're an older band and you see a younger band and they're really good, have a chat to them and say, you know, when you want to book a tour, chat to me. Let me let me teach you what I know, so that way you can do it better than I did and. And then you can teach the next generation, and that way, uh, I think is the is the way forward for the DIY scene all around the world. Yeah.